concerned with my word being my word. I don't want to leave nothing hanging. For sure. On that. For sure. Yeah, so, man, how you feel about... It's a lot of people dropping a lot of paperwork now. You got 1090 Jake, um, Whack 100. Every time you look on Instagram, he's dropping somebody's paperwork. How you feel about that, man? And how credible is a lot of this paperwork floating around on the internet? And how could you tell if it's real or not, for real? Well, I'm fully aware there's the potential and the possibility to forge any type of document. Right. But I think the assumption that or the declaration, all oh, that's fake, is used too much. Yeah. I think that's the first thing somebody said is to try to get you know the shit yeah. off their back. I don't think because one thing is once something has a case number and all that, there's always another copy that can be acquired from elsewhere other than the one we viewing. So if it's a situation serious enough for any individual involved that needs to go and get the actual facts of the matter, it can be done. If you want to be involved in the circus of the internet politicking on it, you got to realize you're going to be dealing with the potential of not having all the pieces if you're going to factor in that people can't forge documents. So that leaves you at a um, fucking stand still a little bit but i don't believe the majority of what 1090 jake does if not all of it has not been verified not to pump what he does or promote it i believe right, he right. does do his due diligence and make sure right. these paperwork he get come from an official place i can say that he comes across at least as that much efficient does, does it feel does it do you feel some type of way that he's a caucasian white dude that's putting paperwork out did that move you any type of way Slightly, somewhat, yeah. Yeah, I do. But I still don't stand in total judgment or anti it. Yeah. But I, I don't, because to single him out, and then we'll have to take away the Adams and the Vlads and the, the Boulet Cavs and a lot of people. Right, right. The Milk Sevenfold. Now, we know, right, because we, we've been in this game for a long time, and we be naive and dumb as hell to think that drama don't move this shit right as much as we try to stay as positive as we can and stay in the right direction you know damn well something positive will get you a thousand views and something on the negative side will get you four or five hundred racks it's just the, it's just the nature of the game so we try to make sure that we put the food within the candy and make sure that we give you something sweet but at the end of the day you're getting some nourishment within what you think you're consuming which is the drama but it does seem like it's getting kind of fucking out of hand when you see certain people kind of now playing this game with real lives, we out here playing checkers with real lives and people, if, for example, like this, we talked about it yesterday and that's kind of um, the video that we put up yesterday about WAC 142 Doug and Offset. We don't know these brothers from a can of paint, never met, talked, we talked to WAC for a little bit, but never met any of them, right? But from the outside looking in, when you see this grown ass man kind of laying out the situation where sensitive egos are involved, it kind of seems like you're stirring up a pot of some shit that can, have some real damaging ramifications behind it. What, what do you think about that, bro? We on to something when we say that? Or, for, like, I, obviously the drama is where we need to go, but... For, I want to commend your coverage. I'm oh, sorry. First of all, I want to commend your coverage of that little situation, because at first I thought y'all was, like, being too neutral. Y'all was so slick and slithery. Y'all was talking. I'm like, man, these niggas... Like, then y'all took a stance. I'm like, okay, okay. But that's the same similar situation he did when he went on no jumper and insinuated that Nip that Nipsey Hussle's murder could have been motivated by Big U being afraid that he's going to take over his grid contract. Mm, exactly. He's a provocateur. And the cold part about it is he's highly involved vocally in incidents that have absolutely, totally nothing to do with him or his immediate environment or politics. Right. He is whoring his energy about to all like a whore does. He's just wants attention so bad. He wants to be involved. See what you see when you see ho no honey, how we yeah. refer to whack on my platform. You see an individual. Imagine you always wanting to be in the Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. You weren't yeah. quite that athletic. You didn't even really make the team, but you right. an expert at Madden. And when you get in that motherfucking seat and you get your controller and that big screen, <laughs> you're in the fucking game. You even made a creative player. You don't play the regular stage. You got your name on your back. That's yeah. whole no honey. To y'all who didn't live out here, when y'all turn your screen, the West Coast landscape that you respected all these years, 
he can't believe y'all see him and y'all view him as a part of it. And that's all it is. Mm. So he's, he's caught up in this metaverse. Right. Yeah, yeah. See that. Is he really since you is got that there, my connection? Not... Is that my connection? You are, are you hearing us kind of cut chopped up? No, I just see myself doing the robot. Yeah, you were chopping up a little bit, but we got we got you. We hearing what you're saying, but it chopped up a little bit. We got you though, bro. So is he really since you out, you know, a lot of the politics in LA, is he really like connected in the streets like that and respected? Connected and respected in the streets. Hell no, he's more connected than respected due to the fact that the streets are looking for a way out. And he had access to the industry, so therefore his interest in the streets was kind of mutual with the streets because he had something that he could dangle as opportunity. But that did not equate to street respect like he thought it did. Mm. Okay. It's just like right now. If motherfucking Kim, Kar Kim Kardashian want to look out for the ghetto, we not turning it down, but that don't make her a G. Word. Okay. Understood. But he took that as if, oh, these niggas is fuck with me because I can help them. You see, as he runs around and try to ex ex explain his importance throughout the years, it's always, I paid for this. I looked out for that. I did this for that nigga. Nigga, you was paying your way. Mm -hmm. That was the only reason you was able to hang. You paid to play. And then when he got into a safe, secure cyber cell, because you know what a sales soldier is. A sales soldier is someone on the other side of the bars that says things to you that would never say on the opposite side. So once he got in that safe place, he's turned into an individual that no man that has ever met him before has seen. And mm. I've known him for 20 years, and I know others that have known him for 20 years. None of us have ever seen him behave with that type of aggression toward any individual in person. This never happened. Never been witnessed. Wow, sell soldier shit. Why if you got the why if you got the keys to Big U House and the six O's is your backyard, like you claim? How do you fall out and get tough on the microphone? Why he didn't hear none of this face to face? Word. You said he got bad knees. He can't defend himself. You scared up? Yeah. Shout out to Big U, Nightbird. You know what? Let, let's let's talk about Big U real quick because we we interviewed him a couple years ago. Solid brother. Everything that he said when he looked behind his camera seemed genuine as hell, but we're not there. We don't know the politics in L.A. or how Big U is, is looked at. And from what we see now, look like a proud father looking at his son succeed. Looks like a man that's transitioned in his life and got out of some bullshit and now doing the right thing. We salute that over here, but we're not there. We don't know exactly how Big U is looked at. So how's Big U looked at amongst, you know what I mean, L.A. in the streets and where you at right now, bro? How How is Big U looked at, I should say? Big U is generally viewed the way that you assume that the world viewed him. You know, right. it's kind of like a Carlitos way situation. And what you guys got to realize is they trying to mix a good person with a nigga that's good in the street. Now, Big U is trying to transform himself into a good person. He's doing right. things community-based. However, there's no secret, no mystery to the fact that his past is dark as fuck. Mm -hmm. so and you got somebody trying to antagonize imagine you on a spectrum from worst to best and as you go in that direction you got a little buddy trying to that you that you no longer fuck with because he was caught up on a wiretap in a murder when you figured that out now he's upset and trying to point out the imperfections in your transformation from worst to best mm-hmm Big U is not a motherfucking Catholic priest that's getting exposed to being involved in street criminal activities. Right. He's a motherfucker that came from the pits of the abyss of the bottom of the darkness of this gangster shit and it slowly transcended the opposite way. So if somewhere along the way he was caught up in some type of gangster shit, all right, we know that. That might be the case. But he's got to the point where he has washed his hands uh, totally of that type of shit and he's trying to do something different. Uh, can't nobody smut him as far as the information that's already been presented. I'm not from 60s. It's a lot of inner politics going, going on over there. But however, a, a, a large majority of what's been discussed has been presented to the public. And he ain't bad by none of that. Hmm. There's another issue they try to throw around with the grid program. I ain't gonna lie. 
when um the cat that first exposed the contract put it online and I read the contract, I went on my platform and said, I know Big U didn't sign this bullshit. Because if Big U signed this, this ain't no good. Mm. But then after further investigation and not just talking to Big U, but my G homies who are also on the program, that was not the contract that they signed. That is what was proposed initially. And then it went back and forth, like how contracts do in the music game and any other negotiation. And there's you make you red market and you return it, return it. And they eventually signed a totally different agreement than that. So let me see. Let me ask you. What, what, what I ask you real quick is you said that like there was politics within the 60s. And sorry, with all due respect, like what's the difference between sets in LA? Like, like how what makes one crypt set different than another? If you can answer that, just the, the, the geographical location. Okay. And then gotcha. from there, through the years, people have broken down their section to align with different sections under a whole lot of different things. That's a whole college course. But yeah. for the most part, crypt supposed to represent and stand for the same thing universally and then based on your geographical location is your set of that crip umbrella that we all represent got you so not not to speak on what's going on directly with the 60s because you don't have involvement with that but why would you why would you see inner fighting within the same set why would why would that be a situation that goes down you know it's been like that for them in particular uh for decades and if I had to just throw it out there, what I would assume the major elements that led to that being that type of environment over there, the niggas is rich rolling. They were some crips that was known for having bread. Mm. And you know when you got a bunch of niggas and money. That's why Big Meech used to always say they ain't never been a gang with this many niggas, with this much money, and no war in between us. So when you got a bunch of savages that's already street invested with this shit, and then you throw money in the pot, and it don't necessarily evenly spread around, got a perfect recipe yeah very right. true not saying that all they beef started directly over money right i just right. would assume once all those elements got in the pot you know shit got the cooking right all right let's let's transition and talk about you know was a documentary released on world star the other day shout out do sims that's my brother yeah. do sims that produced that yeah, he was on friday. we got him on on friday yeah it is i don't know oh, how he got, got him on friday on. yes sir yeah yeah it's on on friday yeah I'm not sure how he got the documentary on there, but I seen it pop up, and I was like, "Damn, hey, hey world start going at uh what?" Then I watched it, you know, and um, you know, they showed a lot of stuff on there, man. Um, what do you think about the documentary and the claim that he's an alleged informant? I think it's an awesome answer to a person going on no jumper and uh, incriminating, insinuating, uh, Big U in a murder conspiracy. And is that was such nasty police work? I think the documentary that showed up on World Star just kind of corroborates his character as a provocateur, an agent, somebody that's compromised integrity and character wise when it comes to the street shit. I think they go hand in hand. What we saw him do on No Jumper mm -hmm. speaks toward the individual that the documentary describes. Now we often go in on the No Jumpers, the the Vlads and everything like that. And people on our platform don't like that. When we mention these names, we haters like a motherfucker. So we try to stay clear of that sometimes because we automatically look like a hater when we talk about this type of shit. But when you look at the root, when you look at the source, typically this type of bullshit goes on in those type of platforms. You got to ask yourself why. So who who would, you, I don't want to say who would you blame, but is it fair to blame the source as well as the motherfucker who's giving the information? Because they wouldn't have it if WAC didn't deliver it. But I don't, I don't think Wack would go on our platform and, and he wouldn't be allowed to go on our platform and spew that type of bullshit without there you any go. Type That's of what report. you better say, because don't 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 give him no credit. Right. No, nah. <laughs> y'all have to definitely put your foot down. Right. Yeah. But I don't give I don't hold Adam, Adam accountable at all. Anytime a white man come knock on your door and you let him in. And he's one one of one. And you let him come in your house and start manipulating and getting people doing some shit, you let him in the door. So if there's a problem, the problem is you allow him to be within your doors, and that's it. You cannot allow him in and then start getting offended by him being himself when who he is is no motherfucking secret. Yeah. He's not offering anything except interest in what we have. He's not looking for artists to sign and 
make him rich. He's not looking for the best amongst us to uh, blow up and make him famous. He does do a good at providing opportunities for people in the field of hip hop journalism by hiring us. But his initial interest into this was a fan, a white boy that loved what niggas was doing. Mm -hmm. That's what his interest was. So how do we allow that to turn into him being able to do things we don't like in our house? Word. That's All our right. fault. It's yeah. our fault every time. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Well, if I'm not mistaken, his studio is in L.A. somewhere, right? Burbank. And you know, Burbank. L.A. L.A. is like when you say New York. Yep. Right. It's right, right. Big. You feel me? <laughs> L.A. County is what they usually refer to when they say that, and that encompasses a whole lot. So, right. Bur but. Don't I don't want to get misleaded because that pop smoking shit type shit be happening out in Burbank too. So yeah, I, yeah, yeah. This in L.A. My bad. Go ahead. The reason, not, not the reason I was saying that's because like you bring somebody on your platform that's you know like you said you know putting big U's name and things like he did something wouldn't it be like a, a level of like if, if we was in this area and we was put somebody on blast out here that did something that we probably would be in danger. We'll probably be thinking like somebody will try to come definitely have to answer to it. You know what I'm but, saying? Yeah, but see, right. That's when the guy is up there doing the police thing. Then behind right. the scenes, convincing Adam, you don't tell him what type of police tactics he's exposing Adam to. He's yeah. man, like you, the, the even the, the the threat that you think would be there, your hands is tied because he's hollering so loud to the police. The bird, the the, the, the the motherfucking um, bro. My last time I went to jail, I went to jail in Burbank. That's where no jumper at. Okay. Ask anybody what the white folks and the police think about niggas in Burbank. The footage is up on YouTube. You can see it. My whole arrest. Yeah. 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 That's that's right around the corner from No Jumper. They do not fuck with niggas out there. So for him to be up there making all that noise and you think, oh, Adam might be in trouble. Wisely so. Ain't nobody coming up there playing like that, bro. For what? To go to jail? And whack know that. Right. Wow. That's what that, and that's why the shit looks fishy. Do y'all not why. do y'all not remember Wack coming to the internet playing audio of the feds calling him, offering him alleged protection against Jay Prince? Mm -hmm. I heard that. How, how yeah. much do we need to see to realize we're dealing with a different type of goofy cookie, bro? He is nothing like us. It's different as we are with our dialects and our, 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 our different ways from out the country. We all have an understanding that we are unison. We all don't. Nobody understands that in no region, bro. Who who gets that? Where do you get Where do you get away with that and still be able to get online to all of us and anybody believe in who you're supposed to be? You met Hassandra Campbell over the phone. And found yourself telling him nasty secrets about what you consider to be apes that you watched a hundred times. And you know Hassandra has a history of male and male sensual relations. Why are you having these conversations about gay footage of him? Why would they even come out your mouth? You don't even know this man. Right. Now, now speak on that. Though those rumors, I'm sure you know, being in that area. Is there any truth to that to them tapes? I'm not just standing out here and say, hell no, that shit ain't true. I don't know though. You don't know. Okay. But I'll tell you this, even from what he described, him classifying it as gay was off base. Okay. A little too nasty, freaky for me. Ah, not my cup of tea. But right. this nigga sitting next to Adam all day. Right. I just seen a video of Adam telling another nigga, he you know that little that little thing where people be like, Hey man, I broke up with my girl. Can you help me make her jealous? Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. And then you get on the thing with the girl and be like, Yeah, this who topping me off tonight. So it was a black dude. I get looked like it was at a porn convention. I could be wrong, but he did Lena like that. And he asked you, Lena, like, can you help me uh make my girl jealous? And then he say, he say, my bad. No, you no, good, good, he say, he said, hey, this is gonna top me off tonight. Adam pops up out of nowhere over his shoulder, like, no, if she's gonna suck it, I'm gonna suck it. Whoa. So fuck <laughs> that. These, these are the type of people Wack gets very, very, very close to. He's comfortable with. Mm. He'll be right after Adam did that. Wack is gonna be right back up there on that platform, letting Adam talk to him like a boy. Which is fucking crazy. Yeah. And you know, I, I said something crazy yesterday. I was like, I can't believe I'm about to say this. Tom Campbell was right to expose that shit. It's crazy as that sounds because we do not agree with shit, but he fought fire with some heavier fire 
because he, he probably would have been done to him was, first. He yep, he played whack, whack goofy. Yeah, but it just show you how loose he is at the jaw muscles. Everything mm -hmm. he knows at the tip of his tongue. Yeah, if you realize his history with Hassandra Campbell, which was zero. It told it shows you how much he's willing to tell somebody he doesn't know, yeah. and it blew up in his face. It's crazy. So, all right, we got whack, right? And in, in the grandest scheme of things, we talked about hip hop, cops, police, and everything, people infiltrating this game to try to tear us down. We talked about the conspiracies for seven years on this platform. Do you, do you think he's the only one? And how deep does this shit go? I, I guess let me ask you this why? Why is WAC 100 put in this place to do it? Is this something self inflicted where he feels the need to go in here and do it? Or just somebody bigger over top staring these puppets like, you know what I mean? Well, shout out to Deuce Sims. We learned recently not only has WAC been sexually violated since the age of seven by his uncle. Damn. Um, that's one issue that could be psychologically causing him to be um, having this crisis of identity, perhaps. But on a not so deep level, like I said earlier, from my perspective, Wack desperately desires or wish he had been a L.A. Compton Gang bang rapper mm. and him trying to be the individual, he knew he could never be that, but yeah. to be viewed as such and be accepted as such, these are the things that he naturally did, thinking that's how he's supposed to be. So, imagine a guy who's never had no respect throughout Los Angeles thinks the way you get respect is being tough, so he's never been able to be tough in person. But in the cyber world, it's my time. I can mm. finally be tough with all these guys. I never had the courage to be tough with in person and convince the rest of the world because I know them. I'm one of them. I'm supreme amongst them. Mm. That's all it is, bro. He's, he's, the attention, he's an attention whore. He not fly mm. at all. And instead of him being the biggest thing in the 818, which he probably is, but guess what? In his immediate street turf politics, he's not accepted. There's one in a million because you can't never, of course, you always have somebody. But when right. it comes to his hood, the Pacoima Pie rules, it's one out of a million that fuck with him. The majority in the masses don't fuck with him. He got a whole lot of issues he got to see about just to even try to go over there and have some comfort. So he can't even be comfortable being proud where he's from, even though because they're not as well known, it's his time. Like, you guys would not be so familiar with Lone Beach had Snoop Dogg came out and claimed L.A., 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 L.A. That's a fact. So he had a chance to put Pacquiao on the map, but he's so much, he got so much Compton, L.A. dick in his mouth. Pacquiao is still kind of obscure to the masses, and that's where he's actually from. And they get busy out there, probably in a smaller pocket than, mm -hmm. you know, stretched out, but they have their own scene. They got riders, kingpins, Rapists, busters, snitches, all she like to talk about is he got all the seven in the valley in his area. But he don't talk about none of that. All right. He he infatuated and fascinated with those that live my lifestyle. Now, what is his uh and I know he manages the game. Um, the game don't really coast on him too much. How do how you feel about the game and their relationship? They don't game don't fuck with him. He got the game by the nuts. Yeah, and like yeah, in a lot of little ways where, you know, game has to sit back and let it appear that they cool. But he can't trust game. <laughs> you better not trust game. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking the same thing. So why does, why does, why does, and I mean, I don't know if you know, but why does he scream, would he scream so much on Pyru, Pyru, if they don't fuck with him like that? Why does he feel so free to even run off? Is that, is that a part of the character? This is the question you keep asking that it's the same answer to this. Yeah, yeah. Fail. He's behind the bars. Yeah. The protection. Yeah. And then the because guess what? The Pyru only means something to y'all. It right. don't mean nothing to us. To the no. real Pyru, that don't mean nothing. That shit don't mean if you look at me when I get on my platform, I'm on my mama mama. I'm not on crib. I ain't on East Coast. I ain't on neighborhood. I ain't on nothing. I'm on my mama mama. And I could just be just as passionate with what I'm saying. Him being on Pyru is him trying to convince himself he's some brand of Pyru that matters and convince right. the world that his Pyru matters to some degree where we should acknowledge it. Don't nobody give a fuck about him being a Pyru <laughs> with your booty up. This shit didn't take place. Right. Yeah. yeah. That should have took place.